Hey pilots, Lycosar here, bringing you some more PvP action in Star Citizens 3.7. Before we begin, I'd like to say thank you to all of you who have been subscribing to my channel. I didn't expect to get to 100 subs this quickly, so I'm extremely grateful for all the support. I chose to feature the Mustang starter ship in the 100 subscriber special because many believe you need to have an expensive dogfighting ship to start enjoying PvP. This belief creates a barrier to more players joining the PvP community and enjoying the exciting, unpredictable, and rewarding nature of dogfighting another player. While you may have a hard time being competitive against the top pilots and arena commander with a starter ship, against the overwhelming majority of players, you can defeat their expensive fighters with more developed dogfighting skills. So please enjoy the video, and thank you for your continued support. First fight will be against the Super Hornet, and I think it'll really highlight um, how good the Mustang is at this maneuver, which is the basically strafing and rolling to fly in a sine wave. As I get closer, I take advantage of uh, my superior vertical strafe maneuverability, and it lets me position myself in a very good spot against that pilot. So now we got a Gladius, and he's got some mass drivers on board which is indicative of a um, more serious dogfighter. Although the mixed loadout is uh, not something I would personally advise, but some people make it work. And so you see me use this sine wave maneuver to great effect. And uh, I'm rocking two strife mass drivers on the nose turret and uh, two gimbaled laser auto cannons. The idea with using the laser auto cannons is they're intended to reduce the shield strength. As shield strength goes down, ballistic penetration increases, so ideally they allow the mass drivers to do a little more damage. Good fight. Next we have an arrow who unfortunately seems to just be flying in a straight line, which is never advisable because you take lots of nose hits. And uh, now I'm fighting against the Cutlass. Now his strategy of course is to launch every missile he has at me, so I'm forced to do my magical evasion, which is flying forward as fast as I can, but once he runs out of missiles, um, it seems he relies on them a little bit too much, and uh, when I get close, using this roll maneuver to avoid initial hits, transitioning to the sine wave maneuver as I get a little closer, and then ultimately uh, trying to position myself uh, in a position of dominance, where I can avoid his firing arcs, but I can still shoot him. And now he seems to be attempting to run and probably going into like a reverse strafe, but it was too late. And now we got another arrow who's rocking um, mass drivers again. You will also find that this pilot is a little bit more evasive. Uh, he attempts to take me into a joust several times, but you can see how effective that maneuver is that a strafe roll sine wave in avoiding hits. And at long range, you can just do a single roll. And he launches a missile, but I just decide to take it. I think he'll launch another one later, but out of the spirit of wanting to continue the fight and not break away, I just keep going and eat the missile hit. So you could see at that range, doing a strafing roll is very effective at avoiding hits. Once you get closer, it becomes less so. So another missile hit, which I'm just going to eat. You can see he's flying circles around me, but not to super great effect because the Mustang is pretty hard to hit, actually. Um, one of the benefits of it is it almost never overheats. I mean, you could see me, if you pay attention to the boost indicator on the left, you'll see I'm boosting the majority of these fights. 
good fight. And uh, now we got a very serious Gladius pilot who's rocking uh, all mass drivers. And you see me get a little nervous, so I start overdoing it on those rolls. And that's something you have to watch out for. When you're uh, rolling, this ship has a little bit of a long deceleration. So when you stop providing the roll input, you'll find that it keeps rolling uh, longer than other ships. So you just have to watch out for that and stop rolling a little earlier than you want your ship to. So we're kind of in a turn battle right now. Um, accuracy becomes really paramount. So he's taking a lot of nose damage. He messed up my wing. But as long as I don't take nose or body damage, I should be fine. One thing that surprised me about the Mustang is how well it does in these turn battles. Um, he is having a hard time staying on target on me because I do turn so fast and I'm able to boost so much. And that was a great fight. And now finally, I wanted to show you guys that uh, a little Mustang that could can take on a big ship like a Vanguard Warp, although you will be shooting it for quite some time. There's a few things you could do against a ship like this. Um, you can take advantage of your uh, superior maneuverability and try and position yourself um, out of the firing arcs of the ship, but of course you have to get close enough to do that. and. Whenever you try and close in on a target, you tend to be more vulnerable to taking hits. So I end up overshooting him a lot because uh, I try and fly quickly past him to not give him much firing opportunity. And now it finally seems to be working. So staying out of the firing arcs is a delicate balance between you strafing away enough to um, stay out of their firing arc, but you also want to balance that with strafing towards them so you don't drift too far away from them. So it's kind of a balancing act, and you can see me do that with my left stick at times. And uh, I stayed in that position of dominance for a while, so just shooting him so I skipped past some of the uh, redundant parts. And here he manages to break away. But I'm able to establish that position again. So I cut to this part where he manages to disengage again. And now he's doing the uh, decoupled reverse straight. Which is a common tactic that larger ships use. Uh, he hits me with a missile, so I'm forced to evade him, he jumps away, but I follow him to Grim Hex. So you can see long range, I do a single roll, as I get closer I transition into the stitch straight. And once I get really close, then I'm able to transition to just trying to stay out of the firing arcs. And after a great many hits, I would manage to be victorious. I hope you enjoyed the video, and thank you so much for watching. And a special thanks to those of you who've been subscribing. It's really helping out a new channel like mine. See you guys in the next one.